Snapshot measurements for basic environment and condensation assessment. A snapshot measurement is simply data taken at a point in time at the time of the inspection. In order to do this we need to measure the temperature and relative humidity of the air. And to do this we use a thermohygrometer. This will give us that data. Some also record the dew point temperature. When we've got our temperature and relative humidity we could use a psychometric chart to work out the dew point. And here's a psychometric chart and note that 100% relative humidity is where the air is fully saturated with water. So note the lines coming down from top right to bottom left. These are lines of relative humidity, 100, 90, 80, 70 and so forth. Scale on the right is relative humidity, scale at the bottom is, is temperature and the scale on the left is vapour pressure. So let's imagine that the temperature and relative humidity recorded were 60% RH at 20 degrees. There's our 60% RH line and 20 degrees at the bottom. Where those two meet, we put a mark. We then extend from that mark horizontally to the 100% line. That is where the air is fully saturated with water. It can no longer retain the water present. We then drop a line, vertical line, down to the base and this tells us that the air is saturated at 12 degrees. That is, it is saturated at a dew point temperature of 12 degrees. Extend the line across to the left, the vapour pressure scale, and this tells us that the vapour pressure is 1.4 kilopascals. So we now know that the dew point temperature is 12 degrees. So what we have to do now is measure surface temperatures. And for this, one can use an infrared surface temperature thermometer. If the surface temperature is above 12 degrees, then condensation will not be occurring. If it's below 12 degrees, then condensation will be occurring. Alternative to a psychometric chart, one can use one of these sort of pre-prepared calculators. And this is quite a useful one, this Vaisala. Put your data in and it'll give you all the answers you want. But please note, condensation is an environmental event and must be determined by assessing the environment. One cannot identify the presence of condensation by other means. For example, looking for the absence of salts where a wall may be damp. So if we're using this basic methodology, one's always got to consider that condensation is frequently the result of excess internal water production and or reduced ventilation and or reduced heating. It is not the result of capillary bound moisture from damp walls, such as rising damp or floors. This of course excludes flooding, which is really an extreme. However, one must be careful of cold spots, which may exist in a normal ventilated heated property. For example, very cold lintels or absence of insulation around the edge of a roof. A case study. This was a problem in a flat in London. The flat was part of a block, large block, and this was a ground floor flat. And the problem area was in the lounge, which was in the area of the north facing wall. The case revolved around the fact that there was a claim that the property itself, namely the building, or rather the part of this flat's building, was damp. The building fabric was damp. And the case therefore was the plaintiff was blaming dampness in the walls that was causing her loss of clothing and so forth. So what did we see? Well, there's some mould growth. The problem that they were complaining about was in the lounge, the north face. And of course, they saw this tide mark. And what does one associate a tide mark with? Rising damp. So let's have a look at this. 
At that time, there were, it was distinctly wet and there were beads of water on the lower part of the north-facing wall, probably been worse at some time previously. So here is the data we recorded in our snapshot. We showed that condensation was occurring up to about a metre on the north-facing wall. This was pretty obvious. The other feature we came across was the vapour pressures. The difference in vapour pressures, the differential vapour pressure, was one kilopascal. And that is massive. That is very, very high for differential vapour pressure. The next stage was to evaluate the north-facing wall. Now they'd noticed that this wall had been damp-proofed by means of an injection damp-proof the holes being present externally. So the wall was profiled, that is taking regular samples up the wall, and the figure we were looking for was capillary moisture content. Capillary moisture indicates any source of water ingress, and indeed in this case it was dry. There is no water ingress at all. As far as the salts go, there was a salt band this was at 1200 millimetres. That was typical of rising damp. But of course the capillary moisture content showed the wall was now dry, so the damp proof course had worked. Now this gave them a bit of a problem, in as much as the wall was dry. So where was the water coming from? He had to find the source. That's the plaintiff's expert. So this is what he proposed. He proposed that the water was coming from the junction, the floor wall junction. We know the wall was dry, it was monitored and evaluated, so he's now claiming the floor was wet. Well this was set under plastic tiles and it was also below the dew point. But he was saying water was evaporating from a position where it should be condensing, escaping through this very narrow gap and then condensing further up the wall. Well, this is total nonsense. However, water evaporates from a saturated screed at room temperature at a rate of about 75 grams per day for a 16 square metre floor. And indeed, a wall is no different. However, air movement may increase this figure. An average individual their lifestyle can produce up to around three and a half liters of water per day, i.e. three and a half thousand grams of water, to excess of nine liters per day. That's in excess of nine thousand grams of water per day. Therefore, the origin of the water causing the severe condensation was the plaintiff's lifestyle. It was not dampness from the building fabric. That was shown to be dry. So in summary then, a snapshot investigation only records the conditions at the time of the inspection. Atmospheric conditions change rapidly over short amounts of time. The snapshot may not reflect the longer conditions that are causing the problem. For example, the conditions occur at other times. Water vapour evaporating from capillary bound moisture in damp substrates such as rising damp does not add substantially to the overall moisture burden in the internal atmosphere. But this does not include excessive or free moisture from flooding. And finally, water evaporating from a damp substrate may increase the modern moisture burden where it evaporates into a very restricted space such as into a small volume such as behind a hanging picture or into a cupboard, some isolated area.